Hello besties! It is Becky here with Bestie Becky's Crafts and today I have a card tutorial for you. Um, I came up with this idea uh, after a swap. I swapped with someone and she had sent me a card handmade that depicted where she was from and inside she had enclosed a kind of a typed up form letter of a bio and she also added a personal note to it and I thought you know what a great idea when we do swaps we're supposed to send a little hello note in there and I know that I am notorious for forgetting to do that until I have everything all packaged up ready to go and then I go oh I forgot the note so, I decided that I would go ahead and make up a bunch of cards and type up a biography so that when it came time for a swap, all I had to do was pull out a card, uh, print off a copy or make a copy of my bio, add a little note, and there you go. So. In thinking of a card for where I live, I live in North Carolina, so I wanted a card that depicted where I live, something from where I lived. So, you know, think of your state and something that your state is known for. And in North Carolina, we have five lighthouses on our Outer Banks. So that's why I decided to do a lighthouse card. And we do like to go to the beach. We live a few hours from the beach. So I love the beach. And if you go a few hours the other direction, you are in the mountains. So there's a lot of things that I could have chosen for North Carolina. There's the Biltmore House, the Wright Brothers, um, all kinds of things. But I like the lighthouses and they are so neat to see and I think there's one you can go up in um, but anyway so this is the card I came up with um, I did get some ideas off of Pinterest and then kind of tweaked it to my own so let's go ahead and see how I made my card so super easy I started with my card base and it's just a standard card base that, you know, you, you buy the package of cards um, from, you know, Michael's or wherever. I just folded it all crooked, even though it had a score line on it. So I started out with my card base, and then I chose this color to go on top. Now... As you can see, hopefully, there's some polka dots on top of there. How I got my polka dots is, I do have a stamp that has all the polka dots. It is not how the paper came. The paper came just plain old like this. But I have a little trick for you that I would love to share. I do not know where I learned this or how I learned this, but if I can take my... let me. Let me back up a little bit here so you can see better. Let me see if I can find a piece of, aha, I do have a piece of scrap paper right here. A big piece, I should say. All right, and I have my little crab on here. The stamp set that I did use was from Lawn Fawn, and it's this one, and it's called Life is Good. So... To get this effect, you would normally need a um, stamp color, ink color that was just a shade off of your paper color. And you know, that's, that's hard to find. You don't always have that laying around. You don't always really want that laying around because you're not going to use it that much. But this will give you a really cool effect. You use your Versamark ink. And you first mark ink is the ink that you usually use when you emboss, right? This is just silver embossing powder. But we're not going to emboss. 
we're just going to use the ink. So if you just take your ink pad and your stamp and you just ink it up like you normally would to emboss and stamp, you get a shade. I don't know if you can see that. Just a shade off. It takes a little bit longer to dry, but once it dries, like I said, it's that shade off. Make sure you put your stamp, you know, on something so that that, that uh, Versamark ink doesn't dry on it. But that's all you need to do. And that gives you a cool effect. You could do that with, you know, flowers for a background, anything on any card that you're making for a background. So, like I did here, polka dots. So, let's go ahead and glue that on. And I'm just using my regular tape adhesive here. Nothing too exciting. And when I cut it out, I cut it so it is the length of my card, but it left a little bit of an edge on both sides. Alright, just like so. Then, if we can take a look at my card, I have this frame. Now, to cut out my frame, I just use some um, rectangle die set that I had. I cut out the size of frame I wanted and then just cut out a frame on the inside. I wanted to pop it up a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. Just to give the card some dimension. So to do that, here's my frame. Real exciting, right? And I just use foam tape. Real foam tape. Now, you can tell that my foam tape is wider than my frame, right? Duh. So, you just take the length of tape that you need, like so, cut it, and then you're going to just cut it in half. That's what I did, was I cut it in half. So, I've already done three sides, and then here is my fourth side. And I'm going to just go ahead and put it down, line it up against that one edge. Now, I cut it a little long and I cut it a little long on purpose because I wanted to get it trimmed as close as I could. It's not a shaker, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but I wanted it, you know, pretty close. So, oh, still didn't quite make it. Cut off a little bit more, and there we go. This card would be easy to make into a shaker card, and I did think about doing that. I will be honest with you, I did think about making it into a shaker card, but I didn't. I just kept it like this. All right, so now we're going to put our frame on. And I could just take all the tape off and just put it down and be good, right? But I get a little nervous about getting it straight and getting it all even and everything. So what I do is I take off like the top piece and then I get the other sides started. Do you see that? I just get them started. I don't tear them off all the way. If you are confident and you're pretty sure that you can get it lined up all straight and everything then just peel them off and go for it, but I am not that confident. So, I'm going to go ahead and lay it down, that top piece. I think it's pretty straight and even. Yeah, it looks alright. And then I'm going to go ahead and just start pulling off those other pieces. And laying them down. And I noticed right here I should have trimmed off. I didn't quite get cut even, but you know what? That's okay. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not going to worry about that. 
because I didn't fold my card very straight either. So, anyway, then you can tell us how I made. And, and look, my friend goes a little crooked. Oh, we're not going to worry about that. All right, so, next thing is I have this little hey there on the inside, and it slides in right in there in my frame. So, let's go ahead and put some glue on there. And it lays flat, but I didn't want to put it on be until I had my frame in there. So I wanted to to make sure that my inside stuff fit inside my frame. So in all actuality, this part is like the same die that I used to cut that part of my frame. The inside part of my frame is actually that guy right there. Alright, so there's the sky. So let's do the sand. So here's my sand piece. Again, I just cut out the bottom and then I used another die and I cut out the curve. So I wanted to kind of pop a little bit and look like sand, maybe some depth to it. So I just picked my my distress ink here, vintage photo, a favorite color, very versatile color, and I just distress the edges. Just to kind of give it some depth. I didn't worry about the bottom edge. More worried about the top. Like so. And then, I don't know, I figured it's sand, so let's, I don't know, put some sand rocks on it. Uh, so, I used my Copic markers, which are the same markers I used to color my little critters in my lighthouse. So, like I said, I just put some dots on. This is E34, and then I did E33, which is just a shade lighter, like so, and then I did E31, which is just even a shade lighter than that, I'm trying to do different size rocks, there's no right or wrong, oop, a little bit much on that one, but that's okay, let's put some tape on the back. And we're going to slide him down in here at the bottom. Okay. There we go. Now, I have all my little goodies already cut out and colored. Just ready to tape down. Figured you didn't want to watch me color those. That wouldn't be very exciting. But here's my little lighthouse. So I'm going to stick him right on there. And now I wanted to give my little critters and my shells some dimension. So I just got some dimensional dots here. And from my crab, I'm going to put a dot on this side. And as you know, I don't trust dimensional dots. I do not trust bling. So I'm going to put a tiny little drop of glue there, and I know that that is going to touch my frame, so I want to glue that down. So then, just come in here, and, oops, put this little fella down, push down his claw, I almost said his paw, probably would have pinched me if I said that, All right? Alright, and then we need to put our other little, make sure you can see those, um, oh, lost my dots, other shells here, I've got like a scallop shell, and I guess like a conch shell, is that what you call it, 
and then I have a starfish and he doesn't get any dimensions because he's just gonna rely on these other guys so again I'm just going to put just a drop of glue on that and put that shell on so no rhyme or reason except I'm trying to match it up to this card and then our scallop shell over top I love to go looking for shells oh it's one of my favorite things to do but you need to get up early to get the good ones and ah I need to put more glue on this guy because that's what's going to hold him on so hopefully there we go and I'm going to hold him on for just a second because he's going to want to not stick so there's basically the front of my card look how fast that was and if you make a whole bunch of them at the same time it goes really fast like I colored you know a whole bunch of crabs and then I colored a whole bunch of you know scalp shells and so on so you just kind of you know do it that way it goes pretty fast now of course ooh, I pushed too hard on my Wink Stella there some Wink Stella to make it all shimmery and shiny Except for my crab, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think he needs any shimmer. Well, he might. Never know. All right, and then of course the back of my card. Oh, this one doesn't have it, but I have my handmade by Sam. And I just cut out an oval and then cut out a bigger oval. And it'll go on top of that. And then I'm going to open up my card and I'm going to put my handmade by a little thing in there. And there we go. There's our card. Wasn't that fast? and super easy super fun and then if you want you can write something on the inside but I thought it would be kind of neat to just leave it blank and let the person if they wanted to to reuse the card so I thought kind of an extra little bonus goodie to throw in there for them so there's a great idea for you make a card that represents where you live to enclose your letter which you should send with your swaps. Don't forget. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the little video here. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And I want you to uh, keep crafting. And I want to say thank you for stopping by. And I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.